How's it going, guys and girls? Hope you guys are having a great week. So I'm back today um, with a, another podcast. Um, I did upload one quite a while ago, and I actually found this um, old podcast that I'd recorded actually back at the end of 2017 um, with some of my friends. Um, and the topic was about indie titles. And I was listening back to it, and I thought, this is a really good conversation. So I thought, you know, even though it's quite old, I thought I would actually share it with you guys. So obviously, the background here there's some footage here just from the anthem demo uh, the open demo that went live this week and i'm glad to say that a lot of the issues a lot of the problems that were happening with the vip demo infinite loading screen server issues those seem to have been resolved and the play the gameplay has been a lot smoother there's still some bugs but a lot better than it was last weekend but anyway enough about anthem let's get to the podcast guys so here is a podcast that i recorded with my friend uh, back at the end of 2017 talking about indie titles all right let's take it away hope you guys enjoy this so the third topic then that we wanted to talk about which i which is one that's very close to my heart and i think because this year there have been so many good games as examples is i wanted to talk about indie games that we've played uh could be this year it could be in previous years that we think are just utterly amazing and that are so easily missed and that deserve more uh, advertising more support more awards whatever it might be so i'm going to start with the game this year which i think for me is probably my game of the year so far this game i've played and it 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 blew me away. I was not expecting it. I knew it was going to be an intense experience. I knew that it was going to be a, a hard game to play and to yeah. go through. But it, it really, really got into my brain and touched me in such a way that I became... Shut up. That I became completely <laughs> immersed. Poison. Shush. Not in that way. Um, and that game for me is, without a doubt, Ninja Theory's Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. It's, I've reviewed it this year, it's the only game I've given 10 out of 10. Now, there have been other great games this year, don't get me wrong, but this game was incredible. It's so incredible. It basically tells the tale of Senua, and it deals with um, psychosis, mental health issues. And it's set in kind of like a Celtic Norse mythology. So Senua is basically a Celtic warrior, and she's going on this kind of trial to go to the um, Norse um, afterlife, Helheim, to uh, save her uh, love, uh, Dillian. But mostly it's about Senua's fight and her struggles with her psychosis. And it's just such an incredible game. It's worked on by a tiny, tiny studio. It was worked on by a group, I think it was like 29 guys <laughs> that worked on this game over the past 10 years. <clears throat> and it had when you compare it to other big AAA games, you know, it has a tiny, tiny budget. And they produced something that was just stunning. It is an indie game, but the quality is that of a AAA game. I hate that term, AAA. I don't like that term. But the quality is so incredible. The voice acting, the music, the, the cinematography. Like, have any of you played this game? No, no, I've started playing it glorious so you far. You need to play this yeah. game and you need to play it with very, the headphones because clever. it's such an experience to go through. It starts off a little bit slow, but once you get into it, it's you, Fish. I do love a game that yeah. tells a story. Would it does. love this game. And actually, yeah. I'm going to order you to come round to our house. <laughs> I'm going to sit you down in the living room. With the headphones on. I'm going to lock the doors. <laughs> Lights and you're going to play this game because it take, you can finish it in about five or six hours so it's not a super long game and it's not a super expensive game I think the game itself was like 14 99 it was like £15 pound. Mm. but for what you get for that money and the experience it's, it's a masterpiece in my opinion yeah. there's one, only one other game and you're going to tease me there's only one other <laughs> game that has had this kind of effect in the most recent years and that's The Witcher 3 Right, it's not as good as The Witcher Three because that had a much bigger budget, but <laughs> the story is beautiful, and you know when you get games where I'm clearly grinning like a like yeah, an idiot, right? Yeah, now. <laughs> <laughs> you know where you get games where you just lose yourself 
in you know like in that game when you're a youtuber like me and you're doing a let's play and you're recording something you're you're always conscious of being on camera you're always conscious that you're being recorded so sometimes you can't quite lose yourself in that experience and i did like in hellblade i just lost myself in it and i i was senua and just everything else oh god it's just such an amazing game like it's still i finished it weeks ago yeah, and it's still it's having that with kind of resonance yeah. with me and like like this game for me was just I, just incredible i'm really struggling to think of indie games this year that i've really enjoyed what about that snake pass thing very good point snake pass um yeah i'd completely forgotten that because i i don't snake pass is done again with such a budget i kind of forget that it's an indie game mm. I say budget, it's probably done on a shoestring, but no, no pun intended. Um, but with your string budget, um, indie games are the ones that tend to stand out more for me. Mm. Snake Pass, though, yeah, you, you're quite right, it's a delightful game. Um, I, I can't really explain it. It's one you've really got to get a hands on approach to appreciate the control which they have put into the character of Noodle the Snake for that game. Um, simply, you you slither around a stage. It's a bit of a collectathon. Um, I say a bit. It is a collectathon. Um, but you realise that you are controlling the entire length of this snake. Uh, you need to coil around certain parts to prevent yourself from falling off the scenery um, or from falling onto spikes. And it can get so frustratingly difficult at times. Mm -hmm. And the genuine panic when you realise that you aren't going to do what you want to do and you're slipping. <laughs> you are literally losing your grasp on that reality as you are about to plummet to your death. The It's it's so intense. Is that feeling of desperation of trying to stay on. Um, so yeah, I mean, Snake Pass has been delightful. Um, the game for indie games though that spring to mind and again as with all these things I've got far too much to probably put into one conversation um, so I'm going to cover them very very briefly um, first of all was simply again going back to the days of Castle Crashers um, we, we, we saw a game there by the Behemoth which yeah. evolved from the good old days of Flash games on Newgrounds yeah. and then they made such a delightfully entertaining um, hilarious multiplayer. We played the crap out of that. It was great. <laughs> yeah, a, a game where you, you, it's a, a side-scrolling beat 'em up in the, the spirit of things like Streets of Rage, where you just move from left to right, pummeling the hell out of anything that gets in your way, and vice versa. Right from the in, you know, insanely large cat monster fish that's hurling up hairballs at you as you run away from it on deer that are pooping <laughs> propelled to the Cyclops, which is only trying to steal a princess and as it sinks horribly into the lava, does a Terminator 2 thumbs up as it goes. <laughs> the game, which then further expands on your four knights of colour, which have their own powers of either poison, ice, fire or electricity... And then it expands so much further by giving you playable characters of the village peasants right up to the Dark Knight, which has wings and death. <laughs> and it just expands with all these extra DLC characters. Um, yeah, the game was hours and hours of replayable fun. Um, moving into another one being a multiplayer, which myself and Dante... I think this was the first game I ever fully 100%ed um, especially, and deliberately went after achievements yeah. was Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet Brilliant game. which took the joy of a Metroidvania style game of exploration mm -hmm. um, as you played this little spaceship in this really dark world yeah, with <laughs> tentacles <laughs> everywhere yeah. very Lovecraftian um, and you start off with this tiny little spaceship with a single gun and a single arm and, and your gun is pitiful and the best thing you can do is desperately cling to stay alive <laughs> on everything trying to kill you. 
and this small little noodle arm you have to slowly pull things out of the way so that you can get through thick undergrowth. And the map just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you factor into it a multiplayer aspect where it gave you challenges where you'd have mm. to work together. One of you would have to, you know, try and fend off a wave upon wave of things coming to kill you, while the other person had to use their claw arms to delicately manoeuvre some kind of rock from one, you know, <laughs> point A to point B. All in the meantime, you're being absolutely assaulted from every angle. Mm. Um, we sunk. I think yeah. the better part of an entire day trying to get a single achievement in that game. Uh, yeah, on the DLC, wasn't it? <laughs> and stuff like that. And introduce Sam to it as well. And it's just one of those who are like, it was a fun game. Cool. I liked that. Good game. Um, and, um, but going back finally, this will be my last point on this topic without <laughs> taking up everyone else's time. <laughs> going back to your point about emotion in a game, um, the most emotional indie game I played and I was very happy that they not only did it on the PlayStation 3 but then revamped it for the PlayStation 4 as well was Journey. I knew you were going to say Journey. For anyone who has not played that game go out. It takes two and a half hours of your time. I haven't played it. Two and a half hours from beginning to end it can be done. Mm. And the name of the game is exactly what it is. It's a journey. You can play it connected to the internet, which I wholeheartedly recommend you do. And although there's no multiplayer aspect as such, as you play through the game, you will encounter other characters um, who are exactly the same as you. And there's no way to communicate with these people other than a single ping, um, a monotone note, and a little icon that will appear above your head every time you do. And you walk through a desert wasteland. There are no vocals in this game. There is no written word in this game. But there is a story. And as you go through this game, through wall paintings and tapestries, you piece together this world which will take you through every single emotion you have, through curiosity to intrigue to delight the scenery in some parts is purely breathtaking um i was astounded by the sunsets and the sunrises um and then as the game proceeds you go through your even darker emotions um there are times playing it i was genuinely quite scared and towards the end fearful and distraught at what I thought this was going to be. Um, it was, in every sense of the word, a journey, and every emotion that I had was taken to its extreme in playing that game. I'm going to have to play this now. It's yeah. two and a half hours of yeah. your life, which you will not regret. Mm. The it's... music as well, though, is absolutely amazing. Like It's so atmospheric and stuff, so I like to see that that kind of tells the story and and it kind of puts you in that kind of mood and stuff and it, it's and the environments and stuff you're in it's just it it's it's like perfect in every way that game mm. it's but in a way which I always do I've gone off topic from my initial point which was again you you will meet other people playing this game and your only way to interact with them is a single ping and they can go at their own pace so as you're working through sections while you're in an area, they can actually help you with that area. They can pick up the collectibles that you need to pick up instead. But there's nothing to stop them from powering on to the next stage. You can stay and explore for any of the hidden things in the areas. But while you go through this with these people, you, I guess, as your only method of communication is this ping, or your body language as you jump, or as you run around. Um, you, you have this ability to kind of float and fly through these worlds, temporarily gliding. And you're the way in which you can express these brief encounters you have with countless people through as you play, you may meet people fleetingly and as, as they literally walk by you and continue on. 
and then others might hang around with you for a good 10-15 minutes but you don't see a gamer tag mm. you've got no way of knowing who that person was it was a real person but that is the only interaction and only connectivity you will have with a complete stranger Interesting. and it's so engaging it's unreal I've heard so many great things about Journey and it is definitely a game that I definitely do want to pick up and I do want to play because I have heard it's one of the best games of last generation you know, without a doubt. Uh, what about you, Edge? Have you got any indie games? Um, I played one at the beginning of the year, which came out last year, called uh, Stories, Path of Destinies, mm. um, where you play as uh, Leonardo, a anthropomorphic... anthropomorphic uh, uh, anthropomorphic. Uh, thank you. <laughs> fox. Um, and the idea is, is basically it is an action RPG, and you can make certain choices in the game, and each choice... Uh, takes you on a different path and there's like at least there's so many different endings at the end of this game and the idea is once you hit an ending you go back to the beginning and you try and work out how to basically get the good ending or the ending that you kind of need to get to the end of the game and every choice you make you think you're making the right choice but it turns out that there's actually consequences or repercussions of those choices so it's a real matter of in some cases learning the characters and learning their motivations and you know, can you trust them, or do you trust what you've learned about the world itself? And the narration's quite well done. Uh, it's done by one person, um, and he does all the voices for all the characters, but it's just a nice little sort of fun gimmick. So it's like a very fun little trivial thing. Um, the, the characters are engaging, um, it's fun learning a bit about the world itself, and it's not a long game. So you can go through the entire path, one path of the story quite quickly, um, then go back and track and try other ones. And it keeps a lot of what endings you've had and how you've done it, which is great. You don't get confused as you're backtracking. It can get a bit repetitive, but because the levels aren't so long and it's easy enough to get used to the game, um, very, very easy to get into. But every time you start again, um, the enemies get stronger. So, for example, as you level up and gain your abilities and skills, uh, new enemy types start to show up. So you constantly have to keep remembering how to do certain things and you can upgrade your sword to just different things like fire damage, uh, ice damage, and I think it was lightning, I could be wrong to remember back when I played it. Um, and yeah, I would recommend anyone giving it a go. It was on PSN for free um, in the end of this year. I would heavily encourage giving it a go because it is a, it is a nice little fun game, to, especially when you're looking for something else to play. Cool. Dante? Um... um Kind of a few. Like, yeah, everyone knows I'm a big Shantae fan, but that, that is actually getting more people becoming aware of that series now, so that's... Way Forward are becoming quite yeah. a well-established company yeah, now. I mean, they even churned out A Boy and His Blob on mm. what was originally a Wii exclusive and then yeah. came to everything else, didn't it? And then remastered DuckTales yeah. as well, yeah. yeah. So, um, so wait, wait, wait. I suppose but, that's an interesting topic for maybe a later day is when does an indie game developer stop, stop becoming, becoming an indie, indie game, game developer? Because I do yeah. want to talk about that. Because then that's the definition ideas. of what AAA even is and all that yeah, kind of yeah. jazz. Mm. But um, yeah, so that, those are all my other faves. Um, one that Fish introduces to that little quick multiplayer, the uh, what, Towerfall Ascension, is it? Oh, Towerfall um, Ascension. But, yeah, <laughs> it's just fun. Like, How did I forget Percy, Towerfall? Yeah. You explain that one better, and then I'll come back to mine. Oh, <laughs> uh, Towerfall... If, no, Dante, you... I'll go on then. Right, so, um, just a lot of quick versus matches, up to four players? Or could you squeeze five in there? Come no, on. I think it's four. Yeah. Uh, just mostly using certain bow and arrow techniques to just take each other out. You have different environments for different levels. In, um, I'm going to have to get the game myself, I think it might be coming out. It is coming Switch out on the well. Switch, um, which frankly <laughs> is going to be amazing to have that as yeah. not only a portable take anywhere with your game, but the ability with your Joy-Con to have four people playing it with just four Joy-Con is going to be Yeah, because it was local, and I think it's got single player mode as well, but the multiplayer was the main draw. It, look, we had a lot of... <laughs> interesting matches they were intense there have been a lot funny. of there's been a lot of oh, screaming in that game yeah that that one gets you well worked up um 
I need to do like a shout out to Size Five Games. You know, did the, the, the Swindle. Oh yeah. And, uh, and yeah, also, you love Swindle. I know. And the reason just put so many hours into that uh, game. Behold the Kickman. Behold the uh, Behold the Almighty <laughs> Kickman, is it? Yeah, for the for taking the mick out of football in general, but it actually being a good football game, like the old school like Nes kick arounds and mm. stuff like that, but with really amusing dialogue in between and such. It, I think it, the concept behind Behold the Almighty Kickmen was it was a game about football made by a guy who knew nothing about football. And didn't Intent- really care and, about and didn't, the rules. <laughs> yeah, didn't, didn't care to learn the rules either. He went, I'm going to make a game based on what I think football is. And yeah, it's an umpire, he sorts of match out, the uh, offside rule can happen at any time. Boop, 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 boop. If you're on that side, it, it's happened. <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> and if you shoot it from far away, you get more goals. <laughs> goals. Like, like basketball. That. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's just amusing. It's, but it gets so overlooked, it's bizarre. Mm. Um, and of course, got super giant games. Did Bastion. Oh, yeah. That was it. But also the le- slightly lesser known Transistor. Transistor. And both which of them, I need to play. Oh, Transistor is I built, need to play Transistor. Yeah. Um, it's very good. Completely unique from what I've seen, kind of battle system. I mean, I've heard the well. soundtrack because you've, yeah, you've got the sound- it. And it's I beautiful. Are playing it. It's, yeah, the soundtrack on both is brilliant. Like yeah. Bastion's got the voiceover constantly talking through as well. Mm. And just, it just sets up how it all works. It, it's. Both beautiful games, mm. they're amazing. And then I was thinking of other silly indie games that are just like daft, like Broforce. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Broforce yeah, is you know, so good. Taking the mick out of Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> like, I love just it. Sloan yeah. and Rambo and stuff like all, all the cliches and that. Mm. They just had a lot of fun with that, but the gameplay is actually quite solid. Mm. And um, yeah, so a lot of these indie games, like certain ones, just get missed, and you might not catch them until they're like three on your monthly membership or yeah, something or yeah. I don't know if that's down to lack of advertising again or just mm. that they ain't got the money to push it as much as everyone else does well yeah because you, you've got big publishers and companies that have that marketing and yeah. so promoting you, the big games like Assassin's Creed and yeah so I'm, I'm, I'm also following a few Twitter accounts at the moment just for when their games release because mm. they're, they're in progress at the moment but the only way you're going to find out about them is actually accidentally bumping into them on Twitter feeds from other game developers, mm. tweeting other game developers mm. and stuff like that. Or mm. at like these game shows, uh, Tokyo game shows or the whatnots. Yeah. And yeah, it's... Mm. I've run out of steam. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was some good examples. Uh, Sam? Well, um, this this kind of title was just I wanted a different kind of experience from games that I've played before and stuff, and I, and it's the guys that I think the the guys that made it was the Chinese Tea Room. It was everyone's gone to the Rapture, mm. and I've I've never mm. I've never like played that type of game for. So you're based in like first person, and you it's it's based in somewhere like the southwest or a very rural villagey area, and you. have you find yourself um, totally alone, pretty much in this village, and you, you're exploring to find out what the hell's happened. And it starts off very kind of light-hearted, um, and you're just exploring kind of the, I suppose, the abandoned village. And and the only thing that's kind of guiding you is this like kind of bright kind of light that, and you don't, and it's not giving no story away, and you're almost when when you do look back on the story, it's almost giving you like pretty much. The ending before the start, and it just totally throws you in confused because you don't know what's happened, mm. and so you follow in this bright light, and you go into like say these houses and and these other other like places within this village, and you're getting these snippets of information, and it's not all kind of a it's not a linear game, so you could go to one area and not the other, and it's only kind of the end where it kind of draws you in, and you think, and it, you're almost in your own head, is like piecing the story together, mm. and. You hear about these um, these people that they 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 getting like nosebleeds or they they're feeling sick and then instantly they disappeared and and then as the game's progressing in this light that you're following uh, and depending on where you go in those particular areas it the story gets a little bit darker and a li- and and you then you it, it is focusing more on them than what's actually happening and at the end it it kind of pieces it all together. And you find out that you know it's it's going through the phone lines and stuff like that. It's really bizarre. I think you have to play it to experience it. Mm. Um, but it's totally a, like a, just not a game that I would normally play. 
and that and that type of game and and I won't go into detail in the next one, but it layers of fear and it, it was almost kind of those story led based games that there's not much interaction. You can't there's not many buttons you just click it's like one click interaction with certain things. Mm -hmm. And it was just to kind of experience those type of games and it just kind of you you're more drawn into the story than than anything else. But I did love the whole experience of everyone's gone through rapture. It was only three, four hours long at max. Um but I thoroughly enjoyed it and it or was that it's another cool. random on PSN kind of? Yeah, it was. A, I think it was a free. I think it was yeah, one of the yeah. free games and stuff as well. So I, that you'd never come across otherwise. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't have that much expectation for it, but just in terms of the story, even the visual stuff as well, mm. it made it very atmospheric and stuff. I did generally love that game, yeah, and so it's a game that I I generally go back to and stuff as well. So I think. That's amazing. I think there are so many great indie titles out there. And I think actually the games industry is in a really very interesting point at the moment because if we have a look at a lot of the AAA games coming out, a lot of them are using the same tropes every year. They've got to be always online, always open world, and a lot of gamers are getting a bit bored of them. I feel it's important to highlight the fact, though, that not every indie game... Is, is good. Is good. Yeah. And um, we've well, already crap out there. We, is it? <laughs> but again, we've already. Well, I say we. I've already ribbed on one of them today already, and I'm going to bring it up now as the <laughs> steaming pile of shit it was. <laughs> and that is No, no Man's, Man's Sky. Sky. It was an indie game. It had the so much finance thrown at it through mm. its kickstarters and its social funding. Mm. Everybody threw money at it, and what did it turn out? Nothing. I. I'm wholeheartedly ready to admit I am bitter about buying that game on the promise that it was going to be this amazing free open world, which yeah. technically it was, mm -hmm. but when every planet that you go on is effectively the same planet with a different skin on it, there is no real variation there. So many of the planets are nothing on them. There is no character to them at all. It's effectively a grey rock or a purple rock or a blue rock mm. with a grey shrub or a purple shrub on a red planet. Right, so this, is, this is worse for me because I'm colorblind. So, it's got oh, so, no. so, so for you, so for you, they're all the same fucking planet. Oh, wow. The universe is grey. <laughs> spoiler alert, people. I am telling you the ending to this game. The whole point to this game is to find the centre of the galaxy. Do you know what happens when you get to the centre of the galaxy? There's a three minute cutscene. Of you going away. Of you going away from the centre of the galaxy. You crash on another planet and start the game all over again. There is no fucking point to this game. If there was, <laughs> if there was meant to be a message you in this come game... You have the hour. <laughs> if, if there was meant to be a message in this game about the vastness of things, congratulations, you achieved it. But what you also achieved in the vastness of things was the fact that there is fuck all point to any of it. Mm. And I don't want to play a game where there's no point to it without a sense of achievement. The Minecraft has no point to it. It's got a sense of achievement which you create for it yourself. There is nothing to create in No Man's Sky. It was a waste of my life, it was a waste of my time, and I think it's a waste of human existence. I have a point to add on to that. A lot of indie games now, because some indie games are getting picked up and getting advertised and almost treated with the expectations like a triple A game, right? Mm. So the problem with No Man's Sky is it, it yes, it was a shit game. I completely agree with you. I think the who what was his name? The the, the developer? I don't care. Uh, <laughs> he basically outright lied about so many things in it. But the problem yeah. with it as well is because it had so much no, it's, it's advertising. Not his name. Let's shame so this much is it Sean somebody? Yeah. So it's much advertising pre behind it. Like it got pre who did, yeah. who did all about the Fable series. Yeah, like, it, oh you can do this, you can watch your dog grow old and die yeah, right over a tree. It got like pre How the fuck does this get five hours? Out of ten on Steam. Yes. It's like a one out of ten. It got basically pre-hyped, and and the, its price point got bloated. Sean it Murray. A, Sean Murray. Name that's that it. guy. That's it. Sean Murray. It basically, its price point came absolutely became ridiculous. Mm. Like like what you yeah. would expect from a AAA game. So because there was so much hype with it and the price point was so bloated, the expect I'm not saying it was a shit game, but I'm saying that people's expectations were obviously higher 
and they were expecting a lot more from that game than obviously yeah. what the game produced. We have a similar situation with We Happy Few. I don't know if you guys have seen that. It's another indie title that's it 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 showed about two years ago. I think it was at E3, and it's a really this really warped world where everywhere wears everybody wears these masks on it, and there are these pills everybody's happy they take these pills basically right. to stay relaxed and happy but under the surface there's a lot <laughs> wrong with the world and they brought out like an early access like beta trial where people were playing it and youtubers were playing it and that kind of thing but there are so many problems and stuff with the mechanic but the developers now the game actually hasn't been released yet it's an indie <laughs> title right and they're asking for 50 pound for this game on steam <laughs> Right, so you have things like these indie titles that, because of all this advertising, because Microsoft are getting behind it and they're advertising it and they're showcasing it at E3 and it's on one of the biggest platforms, <laughs> then sometimes these indie developers can become greedy I'm, to a degree because they want to make that money. I am genuinely surprised looking at it um, that No Man's Sky didn't open the floodgates for something which used to exist in the movie industry. <laughs> what I'm going to task anyone listening to do is go out there and look at your movie films and anything you've got on DVD, anything on VHS, old or new, um, keep an eye out for the name Alan Smithy, usually seen in either a director or a producer role. Mm. Alan Smithy is a name of somebody who is not real. <laughs> Alan Smithy is a name used by directors when they want to distance themselves from the piece of shit that they have churned out into the world. Um, most recently, the one that I watched where, again, it made me chuckle to see it. I recently have been binging through old horror films and came across Hellraiser 4 and <laughs> saw, again, Alan Smithy in the uh, credits as the director. And, yeah, the, the, this is a name that the movie industry has used. In fact, it's no longer allowed to be used, um, which I... So I'm going to start using I, Sean Murray. No, I, I, I enjoy... Yes, <laughs> yes, yes let's, let's start using Sean Murray. Shit, we know this is such a trap. Let's put it any, anyone out there who, um, who, who makes something and realises at the end of it that you don't want your name to put to it, put your name down as Sean Murray. So um, I have a steaming pile of Murray, that. Yeah. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, the, the, the movie industry has pretty much stopped people using the name Alan Smithy. Um, under the coax of no, if you've made this pile of shit, you'll own up to it, so that nobody who ever works with you again. Um, it's it's you know you've created this god awful affront to nature. It's only fair you take you know full responsibility for it. And on the topic of the indie game world, I, I think it's about time that we start doing this. Um, we we don't allow people to hide themselves. You know as much as I would like to. Uh, leave a lasting trope to uh, Sean Murray and his constant shame. I don't think it's shame. fair. That, shame. Uh, shame. 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 Uh, I, I, I don't think it's fair that he get off completely scot-free not being shamed for it, so I would love to see that become a thing. But also at the same time, I think for the future of Sean Murray's in yet to come <laughs> for the No Man's Skies yet to come I want these people to be known I want them to be remembered for the trite they churn out <laughs> like, like the reverse seal of approval <laughs> and on that note I think we'll bring a nice close to this conversation on indie games but yeah some good examples oh there and oh interesting my. conversation <laughs> let us know what indie games you guys love in the comment section below on what you generally think of <coughs> Sean Murray and No Man's Sky please don't <laughs> actually, no. actually I already know what you guys are going to say so it's fine so there you have it, guys. That is my podcast um, on indie titles. Hope you guys um, were introduced to or found some new games that you've never heard about before and that you're going to go and check them out and hopefully enjoy them. Let me know in the comment section below what your favorite indie titles are um, and what indie titles you would recommend. Please share that in the comment section below. Um, I will be back again with more pack podcast i want to do this once a month if possible um obviously with my friends and i'm even open to you know if any of my subscribers actually want to become involved i'd be happy to arrange uh, some kind of uh, chat online um to actually discuss you know major sort of video game topics so if you've got a topic um that you'd like to discuss then please post that in the comment section below if you'd like to be involved in the podcast then please also post in the comment section 
section below and uh, we'll see if we can sort something out anyway hope you guys are having a great week take care and as always happy gaming bye guys Thank you.